Hey guys, before I start the video, I just wanted to clarify a few things. If you're on the Xbox One platform and you need help, I do apologize if I'm not able to help you off stream or on stream. The reason if I turn you down it is because I have to do technical late, late game things and Warframe like Eidolons and Coover Farming in order to make Platinum to keep things on the store for my reward system. So please don't be upset if I'm unable to play with you. It's nothing against you. It's just stuff that I have to do to make sure that I keep serving you guys as Twitch followers and YouTube subscribers so please remember to drop a follow on my twitch channel and subscribe to my YouTube channel remember to turn on the notifications if you want more consistent communication with me just follow the discord follow me on Twitter follow me on Xbox even though I'm not entirely sure how that works yet follow me on twitch and if you're curious as to how my giveaways work just remember you could go straight to my twitch channel check out the commands list and descriptions will be all over the place for you for whatever you want to learn so thank you guys so much for listening and on to the video Hello everyone, Wolfram25 here, back with another Warframe video, and today we're going to discuss the ultimate ways to make Platinum quickly, easily, and efficiently. So the very first thing I'm going to state is I try to do things a little bit different than most YouTubers do. So I wanted this guide to be somewhat unique, somewhat different, somewhat assorted, and also not assorted from what most YouTubers will give guides on how to make Platinum a lot quicker. With that being said, the way I'm going to do this is making Platinum the best ways from Master Rank 0 through 5, then 5 through 10, then 10 through 15, and then 15 and above. If you are first starting out in Warframe and you are on C, I'm going to tell you right now the absolute best way to make Platinum is by trying to do vault runs and what vault runs are is you get these things called orc and derelict keys uh they believe you get the blueprints from your clan's dojo or requires void traces and what void traces are you get those from cracking up or a relic from doing fissures and what a fissure is is what contains prime loot which you can also sell so it all it's all kind of like a continuous system that uh recirculates with itself so if you're first starting out on warframe i do believe you start off with 100 platinum so what should you spend your Platinum on? Um, I'm honestly going to say, number one, frame slots, number two, weapon slots, and number three, boosters. And that is just my personal preference. I don't claim that to be the absolute best. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention is potatoes. Everybody calls them potatoes. Uh, orc and Catalyst, and Orc and Reactor. And the only way to get those without purchasing them off the store is to keep track of the events that are going on in the star map and also doing invasions. I'll show you what those are. Controller chooses now of all times to die. This is Xbox problems, Xbox life problems. So as of right now, there is an event called the Balor from Orion, and by just doing it once, you get an Orkin Catalyst plus 200,000 credits. And the way you tell that that's coming up is this right here the invasions page you'll get the construction status for femorians or razorback armada and you have a guaranteed chance or guaranteed drop of a working catalyst every single time now as for reactors and also catalyst it's usually going to be one of these type of things you can also get some pretty cool weapons from doing this as well uh, it's just they're just called invasions and all you do is you do these missions you choose which side you're going to take part in with you want the correct rate blueprint or a Snipetron Vandal Blueprint, or the She Blueprint, their Vandal Blueprint. This is just how you achieve parts for Vandal weapons and Wraith weapons for either faction. And occasionally there is Reactor or Catalyst drop chances during these invasions. Another way is to make sure you keep up with the dev streams. Twitch.tv forward slash play Warframe, no space, no caps. And usually they have something called Gift of the Lotus, usually after each dev stream. Usually, not always, but just always log on every day. Uh, and check the alert list. So those fissures I was talking about earlier, that is what this is on the right hand side. And the way you're going to unlock this when you first start out is by doing completing a junction on your star map. Because when you first start out on Warframe, you start on, on where? Earth. So you have to complete junctions and eventually you get uh, those, you see, you get that quest in the bottom left hand. Actually, let me move my webcam. See those things popping up in the lower left hand corner. Computer power core, void relic segment. That's what you'll need in order to get relics. They give you a couple relics for starting off. So you get that M4, if you get the Fervor blueprint. 
and codex scanners so you just have to do certain things on that junction to unlock it once you beat that junction then you get those things that it's saying like the board relic segment and the way you get relics is by doing uh, preferably endurance runs of excavation disruption survival defenses those are all like guaranteed loot drop chances for each of those so that is mastery rank zero through five um so the last thing I'll explain for measuring 0 through 5 is the uh, vault run system. Uh, okay, yeah, so you can find them in the store here. It's a reusable blueprint. Once you buy it, it can be used an infinite amount of times. And these resources are very easy to get. Always make the capture one. The capture is the absolute easiest and quickest way when you're doing vault runs. If you're measuring 0 through 5, you're going to want to be carried. Unless you want to look up another guide, I don't have one currently on my YouTube channel, look up another guide on how to properly do vault runs quickly and efficiently. Or you could always, I mean, I'm on the Xbox One. It is currently <laughs> 5.35 in the morning. So there's not that many people on at all. But if you're on PC, this recruiting chat is usually pretty bumping because it's a much more populated platform. And the only issue that I imagine some of you newer players may face is getting to the derelicts. Um, I don't think there's, can you just go straight there? Actually, yeah, you can. You can just go straight to the derelict. Um, I can't remember if there's any requirements. It's been so long for me. I have a lot of hours in this game, so I can't remember if there's any requisites to directly unlock this. But that's mastering zero through five. It's gonna be your best way. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Best wet. Best bet is unlocking relics and doing vault runs and hopefully, probably getting carried. But you're gonna wanna have dragon keys. And the way you get dragon keys is you have to be in a clan. So when you enter your clan dojo, all you have to do is just do fast travel and go to the Oricon Labs. And that's where I'm currently at. You're going to go to this console right here and you get all the blueprints easily right here. They are for infinite use, require ferrite, void traces, and credits. So you're going to want to build one of each because it's always going to be a random choice of whatever you get selected to be when you do the vault runs. Me personally, I like to run vault and having the humble dragon key equipped. Now currently, you can have all four dragon keys equipped now and do them solo. It used to not be like that. Um, I kind of don't recommend it if you're mastery rank 0 through 5 because chances are, unless you've thrown a bunch of money at the game, it is unavoidable but then you wouldn't be looking up this guide, uh, then I would definitely wouldn't recommend it. Maybe if you're 15 and above, a very tanky frame, uh, a really good build or whatever. But So the special mods that you're going to get from the work and derelict runs are going to be number one, overextended. Number two, fleeting expertise. Number three, transient fortitude. Number four, blind rage. Number five, narrow-minded. Number six, heavy caliber. Number seven, magnum force. And those are all going to be the mods that you're primarily looking for when you're doing for vault runs because those each sell for about 15 to 20 plat a piece maxed out the ones that go up to rank 10 uh if they're maxed out they go for about 80 to 90 to 100 plat but that's assuming if you have the endo and the credits for it which if you're mastery rank zero through five you're probably not going to have that now mastery rank five through ten and i'm honestly going to say it's pretty much the exact same thing you want to try and open fissures and you want to try and do vault runs but, unless you're in an absolute dire need of a weapon slot, frame slot, any sort of slot, any sort of uh, thing to help you progress in the game power-wise, then I wouldn't focus too much on that. Focus more, number one, on your star map, and number two, completing all your quests. And the way you want to check requisites for the new quests, or not new quests, is for any quest, is just go to your codex in your ship, it's right here check what the prerequisites are in order to do it and just try and focus on completing the star map completing the junctions and completing your quests now if you're master rank eight i'm going to take a guess and say you've at least gotten to the war within so you've probably gotten your first riven mod and you're wondering what the hell is this purple thing and basically it is a weapon augmenting mod that can have higher stats than regular mods themselves so Unless you have started to understand builds and everything in the game, you can also do Tabe Uni on the Cuba Fortress, which is the Cuba Survival, 
and just farm the hell out of Kuva. And like I said, but that's if you're match rank 5 through 10. So chances are you haven't gotten a Kavat yet, you haven't completed every single node on here yet, you haven't gotten like major way through this. Spy on the Kuva Fortress can be kind of a pain. Um, but so I'm just making the assumption that possibly you have gotten. So you could again always check recruiting chat and see if people are doing Kuva survival because what Kuva does is it allows you to re-roll a ribbon. It's basically all RNG based and just to give you a quick idea of what it is, I'll re-roll one of my ribbons. You go down to your mod section down here, you choose a ribbon and then you cycle it. So this isn't the greatest roll for my Plague of Prath and I want to cycle it. actually a much better roll than the one that I had on it, so <laughs> I'm actually going to take that. Score! But it gives you two different variants on what you want to choose for that weapon. And the way you always choose it is like whatever type of stats your weapon was entirely based on. So mine was based on a little bit of critical chance and a little higher status because statistics are still kind of the meta I'm warfaring currently. But that's how that went. So that was Meshi rank 5 through 10. 10 through 15, again, I'm definitely going to say be doing these a lot. Be doing a lot of fissures pretty often. Only focus on survivals, interceptions, captures, and exterminates. Those are your, those are your big top four really fast ways to open, to crack open your relics. Hopefully maybe getting the gold drop and selling that gold piece for at least 15 to 20 plat a piece. Never sell a gold piece that is hard to get out of a relic for less than 15 plat. Because then you're, you're just screwing yourself. And I'll say that again. The Lith Capture, Lith Exterminate, uh, Meso Exterminate, Meso Capture, Neo Exterminate, and Neo Capture. Those are all really, really quick ways to do it. You could do uh, Axie Exterminate. You can definitely do speed runs of those in Axie or no, I'm sorry, don't do speed runs of Axie Exterminate, do, just do captures. Survivals, you can always do endurance runs, I love doing endurance runs because you get number one, a lot of void traces, number two, a lot of loot. I also take tons of stuff to level up with me while I go, like if there's anything I want to form up, that's a much better way than doing Hydron over and over and over again because I hate that godforsaken map. That's just dumb. Uh, disruption, that's entirely up to you. I just, I don't like disruption. I don't feel it's that rewarding for the difficulty. So yeah, I would stick to survivals and all the other ones I listed off. Moving on with measuring 10 through 15, taking inventory. And this is something I highly encourage a lot of you to do, even if you're a low meshy rank, even if you're starting out from like three, not even measuring three possibly. I don't know, people can get really lucky and get really random stuff. Um, Cleaning out your inventory. So if you want to see all of the prime parts that you have, you just hit select, or you hit your start button, go into your inventory. It shows all of your prime parts currently in your inventory. And take massive inventory. That's what I do. I create a big list of all what complete sets I have, what uh, golden pieces that I have. I write them down, and if you want to sell them and do copy and paste if you're somebody who can sit around and trade chat all day and just type a wanting to sell and copying pasting is easy if you have a mouse and keyboard with your console or if you're on pc um, if you can't do that because you're on console get the xbox app on your phone and you can use that you'll go to the controller icon on the app itself and you'll enable um, a it's a it's a keyboard thing i can't I can't always be specific with it because I can't remember what the hell it's called. But okay, now let's try to get an answer from someone who's not a complete retard. That's how I do mine. You can copy and paste it on your phone and then it'll show up, pop up each time you do this. You can paste it and then just post it every uh, 120 seconds. And it's not just taking inventory of your prime parts, it's also taking inventory of your mods. So there's always little tiny stuff in the game that is going to be somewhat worth just a little bit of plat stuff like Berserker, Condition Overload, uh, maybe Archon Ace, or like just 
uh, maybe dual status mods that you got from doing a, a um, spy mission. So I'm going to try and think off the top of my head is dual status mods. What those are is plus 60 status chance to something and then plus 60 to that element. And that exists for primary, secondary, melee, and for arc guns and arc melees, as well as your pets. Uh, your robotics, those use the same mods off of your guns, so that's just going to re uh, resort to the same thing as if in the secondary or primary. 120% um, uh, mods, like Sweeping Serration. I know for a fact that this mod goes for about 10 plat a piece, so it's not... That one is just for shotgun. There's one for a rifle, there's one for a melee, and there's one for your, uh, your pistol. So, if you want to... Um, sort that really easily i think you just do all right i believe i'm an idiot because for some reason i can't find a way to just sort the ones that i'm primarily looking for which is mods like uh buzzkill fang fusillade maim they're called 120 percent mods essentially and usually people either want the puncture or the slash ones the impact ones usually don't ever sell very much so there's a dual status mods and the slash mod. Also, maybe take a quick inventory of what aura mods that you have. Maybe people are looking for a pistol lamp, which is like 5 to 10 plat a piece, or rifle lamp. Uh, the scavenger ones, don't really worry about those. The steel charge, uh, take an inventory of your, what aura mods you have. Augment mods, you get those from your factions. And what your factions are is up here. And depending on what rank you are with them, you can buy augment mods from them and sell them for about 10 to 15 plat a piece. People are usually looking for them on trade chat. And something about trade chat is have your filter on. So the way you work your filter, I'm on the console, so I have my filter on for include terms WTB. That helps filter out all the wanting to sells that are just scrolling like crazy. Always use your filter, it makes things a lot easier. It makes quality of life a lot. So if you don't know where to get sigils from, number one, you can just go over here if you already have a sigil with them. Okay, so you can't get the base sigil with them. And a quick easy fix to that, yeah, I forgot you could do this, is you can just go to this console for any of them. Even the people that uh, don't like me, like, like Miloka. Is just look at this hotkey down here, salvation. visit Nuloka, it'll take you to whatever relay you have unlocked nearest, and it'll take you straight to that faction. You'll talk to one of them inside of their faction area, and you can get the base sigil for them. And that's how you start gaining standing. Always have it equipped to every single Warframe before you go into any mission, because if you don't have it equipped, you won't get standing, and then you won't uh, gain more offerings from them. I want to say stance mods, but it's just so much to, to sort through. There's there's so many stances that, like, I guess technically would uh, consider low drop chance, but I, that takes, it just takes a while to write all these down, so I wouldn't bother too much with um, stance mods. X list mods, don't worry too much about that. If you want coaction drift, just look up Lua puzzle videos. I'm kind of stupid, and I don't know them by heart yet, because I just haven't bothered to do them. So you're going to notice these things, these uh, duplicate mods that I have that are great. If you're wondering what those are, they come from this, something called a Requiem Relic. And what a Requiem Relic is, they drop from Kuva Larvelings or Kuva Thralls whenever you have a Kuva Lich. And the way you get a Kuva Lich, by going to Saturn... And go to Cassini. It's the easiest way to quickly get one. And if you, I would look up a much better guide on how Kuvaliches work, what they are, how you fight them, what determines what roles they have when they spawn, because they all have like certain particular aspects and, and weapons to themselves. So look something up before you decide to just help on. It's like, oh, I'm gonna go get me a cool new weapon. Just look up a guide for it first. I'm eventually gonna work on that, but. Don't hop right into that. When you do figure it out, go to Cassini. It's the easiest way. So you'll get the Kuva Lich. They're going to take over a planet. You'll do these things called Murmurs. People are always looking for Murmurs. See, see M-U-R. It's, it's always going to say like M-U-R. They'll say M-U-R 666, M-U-R 777. People are always doing Murmurs. Like, there's still, there's a lot of cosmetic things you can get from doing Kuva Liches. So there's always people in uh, recruiting chat wanting to do murmurs and when you do murmurs these are things called kuva thralls that spawn there's a five percent drop chance of them dropping a requiem relic or i know this is a guide on how to make plat 
but the Requiem Relics you can buy for two plat a piece or sometimes one plat a piece on the trade market because they've just been out for so long and so many people have probably farmed the hell out of them to sell or to try and get Requiem Relics or Requiem Mods themselves. Each of those Requiem Mods go for about 5 to 10 plat a piece. Sometimes you'll even see people wanting to buy them for 20 plat a piece. That's a really quick, easy way to make platinum. So let's talk about the big bucks. Holy shit! The way to make a, a big chunk of platinum in one particular go. Number one is getting a well-rolled ribbon. And I'm talking like you want at least 150 plat or above every single time. Number one is going to have is having a well-rolled ribbon. And the way you tell if it's well-rolled I'm not the best at, t at telling rolls. Definitely see what the weapon is based on. If it's based on crit chance, make sure it's got plus crit chance, plus crit damage, plus damage, or plus multi-shot, plus attack speed, whatever kind of mod it is. Make sure it's a, it's a variant for that particular kind of weapon, and it has to have a negative. Most people aren't going to buy the Riven unless it has a negative that's not going to too highly affect the performance of the weapon. Um, I don't really have an example of a great Riven. So say right here the Plague Caprath that I reruled earlier. If this had a negative on it, that, that further increases the stats on the other one. So it would have even higher crit damage, high, higher uh, status chance, and higher crit chance. That could sell really well. Like if it was minus, maybe if it was minus impact or minus puncture or whatever, like because like that's not what the weapon is based on, that would be technically considered a god roll. A lot of people don't like having minus faction damage. I don't know why, because I feel like it really doesn't even make that big of a difference. But yeah, those are essentially the kind of rolls that you're going to want on a ribbon. And if it's a great roll, you can sell it for a really great price, especially if it's a um, very popular weapon. And that's also the other aspect of RNG to it, is hoping that when you unveil the ribbon, it's going to be the for the kind of particular weapon that you want in order to sell. It's RNG, stacked on RNG, stacked on RNG. So I'll make a separate video on how to farm Kuva most efficiently, but that's how you make the big bucks aside from arcanes and the only way to get arcanes currently is by doing eidolons and if you're mastering 10 through 15 then get ready to sit down for a while and look at videos on that because it's a very complicated process because there's four different kind of particular frames that you're going to need certain build setups certain things for your operator uh certain uh arcanes for your operator even a uh, certain amp combination there's a lot to eidolon hunting to doing uh things efficiently of just doing like if you're just trying to do Capture all three Eidolons in one night. I can capture as many as 15 Eidolons in one night with the people that I currently know on Warframe. Um, the Scarlet Spear event had recently come around, so I managed to get my hands on two other Energized sets. I'm not going to sell them until hopefully the prices go back up. Most amount of plat I ever made this single day was 5,000 platinum just from selling Arcanes. So that's honestly the best money maker you're going to want is because like, the amount of plat Arcanes can make or break a build. They can really help you out on a tight spot, and they sell for a really high amount of platinum. But if you have anything of right now of your own, definitely wait a little while because the price on like a, a rank five arcane energized is one k plat. You know what it used to be around three point five. It went way down in price, and some people aren't even wanting to pay six in their plat for a rank five right now because of Scarlet Spear, which hopefully they're not bringing back. But or at least bringing back the arcanes as the reward. Those are probably the two best ways to make platinum. Say, Other than suits you. farming the absolute hell out of ducats, and you get ducats from unlocking relics, like a lot of relics, because everything has its own base value to it. There is 15, 45, and 100. Those are the usual base prices for each one. 15 for common, 45 for um, common, and 100 for rare. You trade that at a ducat kiosk, and you buy stuff in barrel. At the time of this recording, the Tenocon digital ticket I recently bought, so I'm going to have access to the barrel, barrel Tenocon relay. Everything that he has ever sold, and I have been farming the absolute hell out of ducats and more prime parts, and that way I can trade them in, buy up a whole bunch of crap from him, uh... The two top two prime mods I suggest buying from him is Prime Continuity and Prime Flow. Those are always, always in high demand. Next to those two, I'd say probably Prime Pistol Gambit 
um, Primed Reach, Primed Target Cracker, and maybe Primed Animal Instinct. As for weapons that you guarantee you definitely want to buy from him is Super Vandal, uh, Prisma Twin Gremlins, Prisma Dual Cleavers. They're used as a really high stat stick right now. Um, Machete Wraith is supposed to be really good now. Uh, Prisma Grinlock is good with a Riven, only with a Riven. It's not it's not that great of a weapon. Buy the relics from him that have the Axlex Link and Axlex Prime blueprint because you can spot, if you get the Link and the blueprint together, that's worth about 100 plat a piece. Uh, he also has, he's also going to have one for the Akvasto blueprint and Link. Again, probably sell for about 80 to 90 plat a piece. Yeah, definitely always keep an eye on Barrow. Anybody that is currently watching this video and you've managed to make it this far, understand that Warframe is a very, very, very grindy game. It's going to take a lot of time. Even with 3,600 hours put into this game, like 2,500 hours played and 1,400 hours sitting in my ship watching Trade Chat and doing other miscellaneous stuff, working with builds and everything, I still don't have every cosmetic and every frame, every mod, and everything. Everything is just, it's, it's another RNG based game, essentially. It's like you're playing Diablo mixed with Destiny and maybe a little bit of Borderlands, I, I don't know. So, 15 and above, or this can be, this can also apply if you're mastering 10 as well. You're gonna want a Smita Kavat. And the way you get that, go to your store and just type in Kavat. There's all types of stuff here for Kavats. And you get these things called Kavat Genetic Codes. They are five plot a piece. And they have a Kavat starter kit, contains all the components to begin gene splicing the Kavat, requires to install Kavat computer, upgrade segment, those drop from the Hayeka Masters from the Grenier. You can even get that on Mars just by doing a survival there or an execution. And see all what it includes is 10 Kavat genetic codes, incubator power core, a stasis slot, six DNA stabilizers, and a genetic code template. Don't buy a genetic genetic code template unless you want a guaranteed speed at each time because there's only there's three different types of Kavats right now. Vasca, Adarza, and Smita. The only way to get a Vasca is having uh, your cat bitten by a Vasca Kavat in the Plates of Eidolon during the night. I don't want to say it's the greatest thing in the world. Smita, Smita Kavat is still like the top tier most used because it helps with farming a lot. And just real quick, I think I had stated it, but the way, if you don't want to buy those for five plat a piece, the way you get Kavat genetic codes is by scanning them on the Orkham Derelict. So when you're doing those vault runs, bring codex scanners with you if they're going to be invisible. Pull your codex scanner out, you can see them. You scan them, and you have a slight chance, not a slight chance, I don't know what the exact chances are, of getting a Kavat genetic code after you finish the mission. So the main reason I say a Smita Kavat is so when you go do Kuba farming on the Kuba Fortress as granting a proc that gives you double resources. So if you don't have an affinity booster, not an affinity booster, I'm sorry, a resource booster, you'll get at least 400 Kuba each time. And if you do have a, a resource booster on, you can up to 800 Kuba. And the last thing I'm going to mention, the Requiem Fissures, how you open the Requiem Relics. That's the only way to open up the Requiem Relics. Wait for the Kuba Survival to come up, because the cool thing about Fissures is the reward scale. So in a Kuva Survival Fissure, the scaling will go up to 100%, meaning you can get 800 every time, and if you're Smita Kavat Prox, you can get the 1600 per capsule. So you save up a whole bunch of Requiem Relics, wait for the Kuva Survival Requiem Fissure to come up, and just farm the absolute hell out of Kuva. Most Kuva I got in one run was two hours, and I got almost 100k Kuva, which is pretty good, because it's a pain in the ass resource to farm for. Welcome to the rice fields, motherfucker! Okay, one quick thing to mention about the Prime mods. If you're okay with selling them for 50 plat unranked apiece, that's fine. But if you have the endo, and if you have the credits, ranking them up to max, I'd sell them for about 140 to 150 maxed out. Because a Legendary Core goes for about 150 plat. Meaning, not only are they getting the Prime mod, but they're also getting it maxed out, equivalent to the value of a Legendary Core. I've always gone for 130 or 140 or 150, somewhere in that price range for selling a maxed out mod, but because I'm really far in the game, like I said, endo and credits isn't too much of an issue with me because I can just go do index. So the last tidbit that I can think of for like little tiny ways to make platinum is to go on the Plains of Eidolon and during the night 
and fishing for the Glapids. Like, uh, get it to max rank with Cetus, or maybe I think it's like rank 3, to get the final fishing rod, or use Volt, which is what I usually do that way, because the static charge makes it to where you don't have to use a particular pole to capture certain fish. Capture Glapids, and maybe some people are willing to buy some uh, Glapids for about two plat apiece, one plat apiece even. It's just pretty easy. And if you get a cool thing about it, if you get a resource booster on, you'll get two fish each time. So, in the same kind of uh, notification, or the same kind of notion goes for Fortuna on Venus. Get to like rank 3 or rank 4 with them and go capture fish. Uh, you can also sell um, crafted gems like Hartnith and Iridium and other, all the other kind of stuff. This is the last thing I could possibly think about making easy and quick platinum, is Kuva Liches. You can actually sell your, your Kuva Lich when you first get it. If it has an ephemera, like if it has like a glow or any sort of thing to it, um, when you get it, it'll actually be worth a lot. People pay a lot for those cosmetics. Um, and they'll also pay good if it has a high weapon bonus percentage. If it's up anywhere from 55 to 60 percent, either go for toxin or radiation. Top two, I definitely recommend that you want to have in the weapon is toxin or radiation. And there, on the Warframe Wiki, there is a way to tell a guaranteed of what you're going to get, what role you're going to have on the weapon, depending on what frame you take on Cassini to first initialize your Kuva Lich. Uh, liches with an Ephemera usually go anywhere from 200 to 300 platinum apiece. People pay a lot for Ephemeras. I don't know why, but people love cosmetics and Warframe. So if you get one with an Ephemera, GG's. That's honestly all I can think of, guys, for this video. I'm sorry if anything seem, did seem a little bit blunt. It's a lot of information to take in. It's a lot to take into account when you're trying to make platinum from measuring 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, so on and so forth. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comments section below. Let me know if this video was helpful or not, and I'll try to narrow down what I say in my videos. It's been a while since I made a video. Last, the video has been uploading was re-uploads from uh, my DMC5 playthrough, my very first playthrough and reactions and stuff. So, I have a Discord, I have a Twitch, I have a Twitter, I have, you know, here's the YouTube channel that you guys can are watching right now. So, if, there, if you ever want to talk to me, just uh, hit me up on Discord. And please, cross-platform doesn't exist on Warframe. Cross-save does not exi exist with Warframe as of right now. So if you're on Switch, PlayStation 4, or PC, I can't play with you. It, it's, it's not possible. It doesn't exist yet. As for gifting free stuff, I have a giveaway stream every single Sunday and Wednesday for Warframe, and then Friday and Saturday, if it is demanded, we'll play Warframe, sometimes Call of Duty or, or Skyrim or uh, Spyro Reignited Trilogy, or whatever my followers choose to watch me play. So thank you everybody so much for watching. I do apologize if I started a little bit or if things seem too confusing. Again, if you have questions, just let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. Get on the Discord. Discord is probably gonna be your most informative way. Tag me on it, I'll get to you as soon as I can. Time I'll say it, I promise. Thank you everybody so much for watching. And remember everybody, strive proudly. <laughs> And how loudly. Good night, everybody.